Okay, so I'm going to um, go through this problem, and <coughs> you can print this off. I've uploaded both uh, the problem and the solution to Moodle, so I'd encourage you to print it off before we go through it so you can make some notes. So we have um, a company, and again, this is from a different textbook, so please don't consider the chapter, etc. Um, we have direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead is both variable and fixed and it is allocated um, based on standard direct manufacturing labor hours. So that is very important to this problem. Um, as I'll scroll down here maybe. And um, when I get down to the fixed overhead, my base right here, this is important because that pay base is going to be uh, direct labor hours. Okay. So um, another thing we need to do is figure out what's standard and actual, and it says they adopted the following standards. So these items up here are standard, and this the denominator level for manufacturing overhead per month is 37,000 direct manufacturing labor hours. So now I know um, that my base is going to be 37,000, so I'm going to pause it. And you can see I've gone down in my base and I've put $37,000 for fixed overhead as my base. I could do this for variable overhead, um, which wouldn't hurt me any. I just personally know I don't need it at this moment for this problem. So my base for fixed overhead is 37,000. I could do the same thing for variable overhead and put 37,000 for the base. Okay, so now I've got my setup. I know my uh, labor, labor is actual price times actual quantity. Um, the other side of it is standard price times standard quantity allowed, which is the the standard quantity allowed is the um, actual number of finished goods times the input each. For So for labors, the input would be hours. For materials, the input is pounds, yards, whatever unit of input we're having. And for manufacturing overhead, the input is going to be our base. So in this case, our base is uh, labor hours. So our standard input is going to be the number of labor hours. Um, so now I just start uh, filling this in. I'll go down here and, and do the actual ones first, and then I'll come back up here and do the standard. So I know my direct material purchased. Again, these are my actual ones. Okay, these are my actual ones, and so I have direct materials, 40,300 pounds. So that's my actual quantity of that is my actual quantity of material, so I'm just going to make that one green. I also know that my actual quantity there has got to be 40,300. I use 37,300 pounds, so I know that in my quantity variance, which is this side, or the usage variance, that I use quantity used, because in a, in a usage variance it would be based on quantity used, in a price variance it would be based on quantity purchased. Direct manufacturing labor, I have 31,400 hours. So I fill in my actual quantity. And I have it 1625 per hour. So my actual price is 1625. I'll go up here and do the materials purchased at 380 per pound. Okay, so I just want to um, stop and encourage you to, for each of these, make sure you understand your units for labor. This has to be in hours, 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 so my quantity has to be in hours and my price has to be per hour. So price per hour, hours, price per hour, hours. So this is the important one. You need to know that you need to get that in hours. For materials, it's going to be in pounds, so I need the quantity in pounds, 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 and pounds, since this is the price per pound. My actual manufacturing overhead um, is 650000 so if you notice on your sheet, just for this problem, didn't give it because they had a little uh, different question on this problem. Um, I broke it up into variable 300000 so I've got 300000 and 350000 for um, fixed overhead. So I just made those up, completely made those up. Um, but they have to add up to 650000 Okay, so my actual production is 7,600 units. Well, I know that on the um, actual quantity, excuse me, 
my actual number of finished goods is 7,600, so I'm going to have 7,600, 7,600, 7,600, and 7,600, okay? So now I need the, I'll go to work on this column. I need my standard input each. Well, for labor, I need this number to be in, this total number to be in hours. So if I have 7,600 units, I'm looking for the standard hours each and it's four hours, so I have four times 7,600. This tells me how much I should have used for what I made. So each one of them took four hours, so if I made 7,600, I would need four times 7,600 as the total hours. My standard uh, labor rate is $16 per hour. Don't put the $64 because that's the cost per unit. Um, since these are all in hours, I need the standard rate per hour, so that's 16 and that's 16. For my materials, it's five pounds each. And again, don't use the 20 because that's $20 per output unit. And my um, materials is denominated in pounds. So I have um, five pounds at $4 a pound. So five pounds times 7,600. And then I have my $4 a pound. So again, in each of these items, I'm double checking that I have the price per pound and my quantity is in pounds. So don't leave this in finished goods and don't pull, pick up the cost per unit. Now you can, you could in essence put 76 here and $20 there, um, which is fine. It often messes up people when they pull over some of these numbers like the standard price over, you're not going to have the same standard price. So I'd encourage you to do that. It also will really mess you up in the overhead. So I'd encourage you to simply leave materials in pounds or yards or whatever it is, labor in hours. So now I'm going to go down to the fixed overhead. Hold on, pause it. Okay, so on the overhead, we've already put the actual in there. We've said that our overhead is applied on the basis of direct labor hours. And this one tells us it's $9 per direct labor hour for um, fixed and variable is $8 uh, per direct labor hour for variable. So I have my eight and four, that's my rate. And again, I need to take that per times direct labor hour. So I need to convert my input and I've already put 7,600 down here to direct labor hours and each one takes four direct labor hours. So I can't stress the importance enough of figuring out what your denomination base is and getting the units uh, to relate to the rate. All right, so um, another thing that, that some people do at the very beginning is we know for fixed overhead we have an application rate. We're spreading a fixed amount of costs over the units that we produce. So I could, in the very uh, beginning of this problem, set up this fraction, estimated fixed overhead divided by estimated base. I knew in the problem that my base was direct labor hours. I wrote that previously underneath there. Um, based on direct labor hours, denominator direct labor hours. It gives us this 3,700 direct labor hours, so I put it there. It also gives us the 9 per direct labor hour. Again. Don't pick up the 36 because you're not dividing by units, you're dividing by direct labor hours. So that's given in this problem and this is given in this problem. In other problems, they will give you um, the numerator. Sometimes they'll give you the budgeted units. So in this case, I solve for my budgeted units and if it's supposed to take me four direct labor hour per unit, I simply took the 37,000 uh, divided by four to get 92.50. Um, again, some problems will give you the 9250, and so if my base is direct labor hours, my estimated direct labor hours would be the number of finished goods times my estimated um, direct manufacturing hours per unit. Base is estimated direct labor hours. So if I make 9250 and each of them takes four hours, I have 37,000. This problem gives you the 37,000. The reason I do this uh, fraction is this 33,000 right there is always this 33,000 in the middle, okay? And so I need to solve for that. You will always be given two of these three numbers, the 33,000, the 37,000, and the nine. 
The important ones are the 33,000 always goes there, and the 9 is always your rate. So if you solve this, you will have, um, you can get this, prob this number and that number if it's not given for you. Okay, so the only thing that I really haven't got filled in is the uh, variable, and I said I'm applying it based on labor hours, so I need my actual labor hours in a flex budget, I need to know how much got in. So I need my actual labor hours. My actual labor hours are 31,400 times my rate is eight. Okay, so I should have highlighted that eight. It was in the middle. And so now I've got my 21,200. Um, so again, actual is always given. Applied is probably the next easiest to get. Number of finished goods times my whatever my base is, machine hours, labor hours, pounds of materials, whatever in the heck it is, um, and it, that has to be given, uh, times the standard pounds of materials, labor hours, machine hours, whatever it is. In this case, it's labor hours, so my standard labor hours is four hours each. Um, and then I get my application rate, and this, make sure it's per the input. So in this case, it's $8 per direct labor hour and $9 per direct labor hour. And I solve for those. So let's go over here. Okay, and since I believe I have them all filled in, okay, now I just simply solve for it. So 1625 times 31,400 is 510,250 compared to my standard is 502,400 compared to my um, standard standard, in other words, what I should have what I should have spent on this production level. So I have an unfavorable labor rate variance of 7850, and I have an unfavorable labor efficiency variance of 16,000. Um, it is possible in this case, notice both are unfavorable. I can't really spell right there. Um, so a, a scenario may be overtime, and as I worked more overtime, um, things weren't done quite as efficiently. Sometimes if this is favorable and this is unfavorable. I've had less skilled workers on the job and they didn't do it quite as quick. Um, sometimes it's, it's best to net these out. So if I have this one is favorable and this one is unfavorable. So I paid higher skilled workers but they did it more quickly. So let's take this one. Let's pretend this is unfavorable and let's pretend this is favorable. Notice they net out to a favorable. So it may be worth my while to invest in training to get everyone up to this higher skill level so they can do it more quickly because the net effect of those is, is overall positive. Materials, I have a favorable price variance. So I bought um, less pricey goods. Notice it, it came out to an unfavorable, or no, favorable usage variance. So in this case, my cheaper goods were worth it. Sometimes this is simply a market thing like uh, petroleum products will have a market, grain products will have a market that you can't necessarily control. Um, other times it, it might be favorable or unfavorable due to last minute purchases that I had to pay extra. Um, sometimes you're buying cheaper inferior goods and if you had a favorable price variance but an unfavorable usage variance it may or may not be worth it. And again you would ask the human resource manager about the labor so they would or the production would know about overtime, but certainly the human resources would know about cost of labor. Let's go down to the overhead variances. Um, my variable spending variance is unfavorable because I actually spent three hundred thousand when I should have spent two fifty one two at this production level for that many direct labor hours. Um, thirty one four hundred. Um, fixed overhead spending variance is 17000 unfavorable, so I spent 350000 and I budgeted for 330000 so my rent, my real estate taxes, something went up. Uh, my application was for variable 243200 and I should have spent 251200 um, This mainly has to do with I should have taken this many labor hours, 7,600 times four, and I actually spent um, 31, took 31,400, um, so I took more than I should have, 8,000 unfavorable. 
and my production volume variance um, or fixed overhead volume variance, whichever one you need to call it is fine, but you better call it a volume variance, is 23.6 minus 33,000. Uh, so I have 59,000 unfavorable. Um, you can prove this. My budgeted production was 7,600. Um, my actual, let me pause that and get those right. This is better. My actual production is 7,600. Notice it's actual number of finished goods. My budgeted product, production was 92.50, um, which I got by the 37 hours. Each of them was supposed to take four hours, so I must have thought I was going to make 92.50. So I'm under by 16.50 at four hours per unit at a fixed overhead application rate. So the nine and the four come straight out here. So the 9 and the 4, so 1650 times 4 times 9 is 59400, which will always be that. So my production volume variance simply is based on the fact I thought I was going to spread my $333,000 of fixed costs over 37,000 direct labor hours, and I only spread my, uh, my $333,000 of fixed costs over 30,400 labor hours because I made 7600 instead of 9250. So, hope that helps. You can pause this, take it slow, do whatever you need.